for this tour. Well, welcome to you both. Rafe, I'll start with you. Uh, New Zealand's uh, Prime Minister, John Key, said that uh, it's inevitable that the country will, will become a republic, but it's been pushed back because of the popularity of the royals. What is it about them that makes it, them so popular? That's right. Well, three of the last New Zealand Prime Ministers have said that it was going to be inevitable that uh, New Zealand would become a republic. However, nobody uh, over the last 15, 20 years could ever have foreseen or imagined the degree of popularity that the royals currently enjoy. Dare I say that this is a renaissance or even a golden age. And it's almost as if the planets have come into line for the, the royal family. Firstly, the Queen is so well regarded and admired around the Commonwealth that she has a, a huge degree of of support and affection from the public and then everyone loves a young dynamic family and we have that in the person of uh, Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge and now young Prince George and they aren't they aren't stuffy and Australians and New Zealanders really like the fact that these are two young down-to-earth people with whom they can relate so they're forging a new bond making the monarchy adapt and make itself relevant to the 21st century we've seen it in Canada we're seeing it now in New Zealand and we will see it in Australia support from the monarchy is at levels we haven't seen for 20 years. And no doubt the glamour of this young couple is adding to the popularity. Absolutely. Well, we have to remember that these are two people who have uh, really become uh, ambassadors for Britain, but also for, now for New Zealand. But we have to remember that uh, this is going to be the future king and queen of New Zealand. So they're there not as British representatives, they're there as New Zealand's future king and queen. And so through the uh, celebration of uh, fashion and jewellery, the, the, the wine industry, they're great ambassadors for promoting New Zealand. Zealand industry and trade. Sophie, you know your fashion well. Um, there's this sort of global obsession with what Kate wears, isn't there? I think she's, everyone seems to be fascinated by her because she's so she's sort of reliably groomed and well turned out and consistent. And I think she adds, a, she, people feel they can relate to her in a way. She works very hard to create this image which isn't too lofty and she you know she'll wear the high street you see her in a nice striped tops um, and I think she is so elegant and um, she never lets us down and immediately when she puts something on it's sort of sold out whether it's online or in stores the impact I think on the British fashion industry in particular is so positive and so strong it's interesting, she's not a model, she's not a clothes horse, so I think people feel they can relate to that even more. And in many ways, Diana was the same, wasn't it? Wasn't she? Yes, I think for whatever reason, certain people touch people's hearts, I think, or they feel that they admire them or look up to them and I think um, are in touch with that. And I think she really does appeal, have this mass, mass appeal, not just, but globally. And uh, she's really taken a leaf out of the Queen's book because the Queen often wears the emblems of, of the countries that she's visiting. And uh, Kate did this on this particular trip. I think it's a wonderful sign of respect. And also she's performing a duty, she's performing a role. And I think we must always remember that, that she is representing our nation and our Queen. And I think she wants to do that with pride. Rafe, I'm an Australian, so I, I kind of understand the attitude towards the royals. Is there a significant uh, difference between uh, how the uh, New Zealanders perceive the royals and the Australians? Very much so. For historical reasons, uh, Australia ha had a, a much larger Irish emigration than New Zealand did, and obviously thousands of convicts were transported uh, from, from the old country to Australia. So there's always been a much stronger uh, Republican movement uh, in Australia than in New Zealand, which was much more economically dependent on, uh, on Britain. Uh, in, in, in the First World War, New Zealand conscripted troops, uh, Australia didn't. But we're now seeing those poll levels actually even out. And so uh, recently in February we had a poll in Australia, only 39% of Australians wanted a, a republic, uh, only about a third of people do in, in New Zealand. Uh, and even John Keating, the Prime Minister who famously uh, put the referendum to the Australian people, a very divisive referendum in the 90s, has now admitted that it's no longer a, an, an issue. So this, this is a, a huge transformation in the outlook that Australians and New Zealanders now have 
to the monarchy. And I think in part that's because Australians and New Zealanders uh, no longer regard the monarchy as an imperial hang-up, but they've become nationalised. There's an Australian crown and a New Zealand crown, and as in Canada too, with the Royal Canadian Navy being reintroduced, people are taking pride in their royal heritage, and in an era of globalisation, they cling to things like the monarchy to give them a sense of pride in their nation. And you're right, uh, Paul Keating did push very hard for a republic in Australia. Sophie, a lot of planning goes into these outfits. What sort of look are you expecting in, in Australia, the next sort of leg of her, her tour? Well, I think from what we've gathered from New Zealand is that Kate is not going to shock us or surprise us. She's going to be reliable um, and always look glossy. And she's using a lot of colour. She has a great command of colour. And I think, you know, in terms of that's something that the Queen, I think, also does very well. And it photographs beautifully. I think she's, she's really sort of exercised all our finest um, British designers and I think that will continue in Australia. She's using designers that she um, has worn historically I think and we'll see much of the same. Um, lots of bright, it's, uh, you look at a picture of Kate Middleton it makes you feel happy I think. She's got that sort of joy about her and she just keeps serving up look after look after look um, which is, I mean it, some could say it's safe but I think that is the point of this. It's not a time now, would not be the time to experiment or go wild. No, and the fact that she wears clothes that are so accessible to other women is, is also quite exciting. It's, it's crucial because, you know, we want to be able to relate to her. The, the world wants to be able to relate to her and not feel separated from them. And I think that's the, that's the real skill with her and William as a couple, is that they have this appeal because we feel not alienated by them. Um, and I think that they do this brilliantly. Great. Well, thank you very much, Sophie, and thank you, Rafe, uh, both for joining us. It'll be interesting to see the next leg of this trip. Well, stay with us 